Welcome to Dave's Diary. I'm going to fill you in on my last six weeks, seven weeks. And um, it's been good. So they join me in the Horton Lodge, and uh, I've just looked at the time, it's quarter past 11, and it's been a hard day, I'm not going to lie, we struggled. Having said that, I did catch an awesome fish, one that I actually wanted to catch, it's one of the A-team from the boat pool, um, and I caught it off the top, which makes it that much, that much sweeter. Anyway, so we're here at the Horton Lodge. So you've got five lakes here, but only really four that I, I fish. So you've got Horton itself, the boat pool, Kingsmead one and the crayfish pool. You've got the island lake as well, but really you need, you need a boat to fish that one. Um, and I pretty much just wander around all of them with one rod, a couple of rods. And, you know, I'll be honest, part of me was a bit like oh, Horton, Horton Lodge, like it's all a bit lardy dardy, manicured grass, am I going to like that? And I think in all honesty, I've, I've loved it. Like you, you, t you turn up at the lodge on a Sunday morning and you've got you know, the anglers around the lake, and then you've got like families, you've got wives and girlfriends and kids all in the lodge, and you've got 60 inch Samsung TV, and there's cartoons on. It's incredible, you know, you don't get that anywhere else. And there's something about that that is really like, it, it's just really like satisfying to see all the happy families. And yeah, I think I started probably six, seven weeks ago. The first sort of couple of weeks, I walked and looked and was coming quite a lot before work and then come in for a couple of hours after work. That's the sort of side of it you don't see, like them, you know, when you do see a fish catcher and the few hours before work, getting up at half four in the morning to have a wash, to come in and see the sun, well, sort of miss the sunrise, but see that then first couple of hours of light, see where the fish are and trickle a bit of bait in. I'm not trying to fill it in and ruin anyone else's fishing, really. All I'm trying to do is get the fish to come in. And you'd be amazed when you crush them boilies up, you know, you think, oh, it's only five boilies, but when you crush them up into bits and you see it falling through the water and there's all bits, you know, them carp will grub about for ages, especially as, as they're grubbing and, like, kicking it all up, it's still dropping elsewhere, and you'd be surprised how long they'll stay and feed on five boilies. When I eventually fished, I knew Ollie was about, so came over onto the boat pool, and I thought he was doing the night, so I set up as close as I could. I thought, oh, you know, we'll catch up, and then... I'll, I'll go over to Kingsmead afterwards. And anyway, I was fishing for an hour, so I'd moved all my gear up and Ollie left. So in the finish, I'd literally just chucked out two rigs, nothing through the night, woke up in the morning, found them around another bay, and um, they were just lumping constantly. And I um, got two rigs out, still showing. A couple of hours like, later, sat there, nothing. I'm thinking, what is going on? I should have had a bite. So I wound one of the rods in, flopped the zig out, and it's rattled off 20 minutes later. Yeah, chuffed, off the mark, wicked, got fish. So basically what I do is I have Sunday, Monday off from work. And what I normally do is spend the morning with the missus and she drags it out for as long as she can. So generally I get here for like late afternoon and I do late afternoon through to Monday and then I leave uh, Monday evening. So I get about 24, 36 hours depending. And then I try and get at least one morning where I do like an hour or two before work, depending on how tired I am. And generally that same day I'll do the evening, so I'll probably do after work um, till about 10, till it gets dark. So that's me, they're my fishing times. One in particular, I'd, I'd come over, to be honest, I was only really having a quick walk round. And literally the first bay I walked into, there was like, there was fish everywhere. Not like one or two, there was fish everywhere. I had to stand there for ages and I'm hugging this tree and I'm like, oh, come on. And, and you're sort of waiting, 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 and eventually I've loaded my rig in. And I remember putting the rod down, sitting back thinking I'll have a tea before, before anything, it'll calm my nerves. And I've looked at the time, and I've literally got 20 minutes before I've got to get to work. So 
<clears throat> hung out as long as I could, obviously I had to reel in, go to work, and all day at work I'm thinking, I've got to get back there, I've got to get back there, I've got to get back there. And come six o'clock, I'm flying out that door. Obviously all the way here I'm thinking, I don't, hopefully no one's there, hopefully I can get back in there, hopefully the fish is still, all these things are going through my mind. Anyway, I've gone, barred my gear around, and it was hammering down, that's all I was thinking, even though it was raining, I didn't care. And I've got round into this little bay and I've crept over and I'm looking down, and because you know, in the morning it was, it, was, it was nice and calm and it was sunny, I could see, but now it's suddenly overcast and it was drizzling. You know, you've got all these little droplets on the water and I'm, I'm tr really struggling to see and I'm looking, looking, looking. I'm like, oh my God, there's fish there. And I've managed, after waiting for ages, to lower this rig in and they came straight in. So I've got, imagine, I've got the rod down and it's on the floor and fish are feeding everywhere. And all I can think is I'm not going to move because I'm going to spook them. So I ended up standing there for two hours in the rain I'm turning around like this and I'm looking, 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 and all of a sudden I've just my clutch has gone into meltdown. I'm picking up the rod, and it's one of those, I'm, I'm trying to tighten up the clutch and it's just yanking. And uh, and it's just stripped untold line. Now if it'd done 20 yards, it would have been like it's a cart, but it just kept going and going and going. And what I'm thinking is, surely a catfish hasn't come in. So the boat pool, it's full of catfish up to I think 90, 100 pounds, something like that. And um you know, the whole time I'm watching these carp, and I'm thinking, surely I haven't looked away. And in those 10 seconds, a catfish has come in and picked up my rig, but it's got to be a cat. Eventually it stopped, pump, 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 got it all the way back in. Suddenly a, a mirror just popped up, and I was like, oh my God, it's a carp. I remember throwing the net forward, scooping it up, and looking at it, thinking, it's a big carp, like it's long. And I'm thinking, where's Ollie when I need him? And uh, anyway, he was on holiday, so I've had to do pictures, lobbed it back. And um, yeah, that's my first boat pool carp. Over the next few weeks, I came back again, carried on in the mornings and the evenings, and I managed to catch a few fish. 20, 27 pound linear, incredible fish. Like a bit, they call it the kinky lin, I think. Had another one in the morning, like 24 pound. Again, nice, lovely fish, young fish. Imagine in a few years, he's gonna be a nice one. As I'm stood there looking out in the boat pool, you know what it's like, I can't help but keep looking around. I'm looking around, and I look over onto Horton. Now, the boat pool and Horton are separated by a causeway. And if you're in one corner, you can actually look straight onto the, the plateau. So most people that know Horton will know the plateau swim. And um, I'm looking over and it's real shallow and I can see all these carp sat there. I'm thinking, oh, there's no one in the swim. They definitely look up for a floater. And I've just fired out two pouchfuls of mixes. Well, they were PVA bags. They just came straight up and started taking. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. So I ran and grabbed the rod and uh, put the bolt machine on, cast out. And you can imagine, I'm stood there, fish are taking, I'm like, I'm gonna have one straight away. First cast onto Horton, don't know what all the fuss is about, I'm gonna catch one. Three casts later, I'm still like, oh, come on, come on. And I eventually, <clears throat> um, I put the rod down and I was tying up PVA bag and the rod's just gone. Like, I use a little bait runner and clutch is going. So I'm like, hey. Struck into it, playing this fish, hook pull. I'm like, oh, I can't believe it. So I've wound this in. Trying to smile, trying to be like, oh yeah. Got it in and, um, and I cast it out. And I remember casting it out and it landed thinking, that was like spot on. I'm sure that's, I couldn't have placed that any better. As I'm stood there patting myself on the back, Rod's just gone in my hand. So I'm like, yeah, this is easy, this horn. Anyway, I'm playing this fish and it's just flat rodding me. And I'm looking at my rod thinking, it's not little. So I'm back one and back one and back one and it's going down the lake. I'm not gonna bore you, it came off. I mean, I landed too great, but yeah, I was kicking myself. Anyway, I left, my tail between my legs, you can imagine, fuming. And um, returned a couple of days later, caught one, wicked, 24 pound. Um, it's worth mentioning, when I got down, there's actually blossom all over the surface. And <clears throat> I didn't have any oil, hadn't oiled up my mixes. And luckily, one of the guys, Chris, lent me some oil, oiled up my little PVA bags, fired them out, and for anyone that hasn't done this before, when these bags land, they dissolve and the oil just pushes all the blossom apart. So you end up with these massive clear areas that you can fish to. And, um, and that's what happened. I managed to catch one, 24 pounds, buzzing, so happy. So after that one off the top out of Horton, I then had to go up to Leeds, to see my girlfriend's family. And I, it was about a week or 10 days before I could get back. And I can't explain this. People think I'm mad and I've told my friends and I'm sure they give me dodgy looks. But I'm driving to the lake. I've got 
a night ahead of me. I've had about 36 hours ahead of me. And over the years, I fished Kingsmead over the years on and off for years, 15 years. I remember catching these fish at 16 pounds just after they'd gone in. And anyway, they've grown a bit since. One in particular, Starries, which is now the big one. Um, I kind of always wanted to catch it. My, my best mate, it was his first 30, and a couple of my other mates caught it as it got bigger. And, you know, he was elusive, never caught him. Anyway, I'm driving to the lake, and don't know why, but I'm thinking, I could end up on Kingsmead 1. If I end up on Kingsmead 1, where would I go? You know, if I got in the helipad, I'd, I'd cast that there, because if I was Starries, that's where I'd be. I'd be out in the middle of the pond. Anyway, I've run round in, into the helipad, which is the swim I was thinking of, and straight away there's fish coming in, in the edge, and um, I crumbed up some boilies, dropped them down, gone up to the edge, end of the swim, because it's on like a long like point. And I'm um, looking down, there's more fish there, and I'm thinking, God, there's fish everywhere. And as I've come back, that crumb boilie, there's two fish feeding on it. I'm like, that's it, that's all I need to know. And I've got all my gear. I was so desperate to get down there, I could have driven round, but I was just like, no, no, get all my gear, and I've run all the way down. And uh, anyway, I've gone into the swim. Like, by now, it's dark. The whole time this is happening, there's fish jumping, 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 jumping. But because of that thought earlier on, when I'm driving to the lake thinking, if I was stories, I'd be out in the pond, I'd be out there somewhere. And that's all I'm thinking. So as much as these fish are jumping around me, I'm like, nah, nah, I know where I'm going to cast. And anyway, I've got my little Scopex squid dangling down. I've side hooked a little PVA bag, looked out into the distance and just sent it. Plop, and that's a start. Donk. And it's proper gone down, like to the point where I'm like, oh. So, um, so I put the rod down, I've just left it on the deck. And, um, Sat back down, put the kettle on, I'm like, that's a bite, definitely a bite. And um, eventually I was sort of looking at the time thinking, oh, I was getting really late. Got the other rod and as I'm sorting the other rod out, it's just just ripped and off it's gone. It's not really doing a lot, reeling it in, reeling it in. In my mind I'm like, eh, probably a small one, but it's just nice to get the bite. And, uh, and I've got it all the way in and suddenly it's just surfaced, it's probably 15 yards out. And in the moonlight I'm thinking, that's quite a long fish. Right? Anyway, eventually I've scooped it up, looked into the net and I'm like, that is quite big. Flicked my head torch on and I'm like, oh my God. And I'm looking at pictures and I'm going through my phone going, oh, I'm trying to find a picture of stories. I'm like, that's it, that is definitely it. Oh my God, is it? And I remember texting Ollie and I knew he was fishing up on Horton. What is it? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's stories. And he went, is it big? And I was like, you know, I'm, I swore, I was like, it's big. And he was like, I'm coming, brother, I'm coming. weight's irrelevant and even though it was heavy I had it there and I was like I would have held it there all day you know when you catch one of them ones you want to catch and it's like it's not going down I'm gonna find the strength and um, yeah we've done the shots <clears throat> got him back buzzing like we went and got breakfast and, and we came back and we actually ended up going on to Horton and found him straight away again in this bay all jumping and Ollie was like where do you want to go and I'm like no man you've done my pictures pick a swim so he's, he's gone into where he wanted and uh, we sat there for a little while until it got to the point where you know we'd been up all night and we were like we're trying to talk we're like that with a tea like, mm -hmm. and we were like let's get some sleep so um <laughs> we got some sleep and I was like gone I wasn't waking up and um he came around I woke up probably a few hours later and I, you, know, you know when you're so tired that you just, it takes you ages to wake up. I'm sitting there, I'm looking around thinking, I'm on Horton, I'm fishing. And, uh, and Ollie had seen me, but I was still not with it. And I remember going, getting my water butt, putting the kettle on, looking around. To, honestly, it took me ages to wake up. And Ollie's come around, he sat down next to me. He's like, oh, I had to get someone to do photos. I was like, all oh, right, yeah, cool. I'm sorting myself out and I'm like, do photos, what is he talking about? And he's got this little cheeky grin on his face and he's like, 
bro, I'd like to get someone to do photos. I was like, oh, all right. Kettle's boiling. I'm like, did you catch one? He's like, yeah, the 37. I told you one of us would wake up. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, he did actually say one of us would wake up to a bite. And um, <clears throat> he was right, he did. And um, yeah, 37 pounds. So it was like wicked mornings fishing, like maybe the 48, only the 37. Lovely times. Anyway, after stories, uh, it was a week before I got back and the first day that me and Ollie, Ollie and I, had fished that over at Hort and he said to me, he said, these carp don't like being cast out, they don't like being fished for, so if you get a cast, leave it. And um, that's what I had going in my head, so these fish are jumping, I managed to get two rigs in and they're jumping, jumping, jumping. In my, in my head, I'm thinking, I need to recast, like I, I'm, I'm picturing it now, they're long, they're nowhere near where I've got my rigs, I need to recast. And then in the back of my mind, I've got Ollie going, don't recast, don't recast, don't recast. And in the end, I went, oh, I wound my rod in. <laughs> and uh, stood there, waited for one to show, and I cast to it, and it's landed, bang on. And it's, it's donked down, so I know it's fishing, because it's a nice, firm uh, drop. Put the rod down, I'm like, that is a bite. I did not see another fish for about two hours. And again, I had Ollie in my head going, you recast, why'd you recast, bruv? You should have just left it where it was. And as I'm sat there thinking, oh, I shouldn't have recast, shouldn't have recast. One's literally just gone, just like that, like the fish in the tank. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so this fish had jumped out and I had, I'd literally just tied up another solid bag. So I looked at it and thought, oh, do you know what? Underarmed it, donk, that'll do. Put the rod down, making a tea. And I'm like, I remember thinking to myself, I'm not gonna cast another rod out. I don't need to, that was bang on the money. They're still fizzing, leave it. So I've clipped the, clipped the bobbin on, put it on the alarm, but I've turned the alarm off and I'm sat there and you know when you're like, I'm sitting there and I'm, what was that, I definitely saw something. Nah, just sit again anyway, my bobbin is just going dook, 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 dook. And I'm thinking, oh, liners, could be, there's weed down there. And then suddenly it's gone all the way up and then pushed into the roller. I'm like, that's, that's not a liner. And I'm sitting there thinking, go on, go then, go on. And in the end I was like, no, I'm not gonna wait. And just wound down, struck into it, just gone, wolf. And I'm like, oh, it's a carp. Taking line, it's plodding about, plodding about, and then it's hit the surface, and I'm like, ooh, it's quite a good one. Anyway, it's gone round a bit more, got it in the net, it's a chunk. And um, yeah, I think it was, it was one they called Sumo, little bruiser, um, 34 pounds. From that sort of day onwards, it started to get tricky. I think we, we must have done two or three weeks old of like, of like having a real go for nothing. Um, I found a group of fish in one little bay. They're, they're about, like suddenly they're popping up. So they've had their little morning feed, they're on the surface. Put us a mix in. This one carp's taking and I'm watching him and he's, he's coming up and he sort of, he can see my hook bait and he keeps avoiding it. And it must have been an hour, two hours of me just grinding out, just like, come on, just take my hook, mate. And anyway, eventually, you know, it, the planets have aligned, everything's nice. It's like the, the way the wind's going, my hook link's kicked around, my float's back, and the fish is coming straight towards it. And I'm like, that, that's a bite, that's gonna be a bite. He's come in, he's taken one, and he's beelining for it. And I'm thinking, go on, go on, go on. Anyway, hooked him, little fight, let him go, learnt my lesson, let him run as far as he wants to go. Tired, mate, cool. Got him back and I got him in the net, 27 pounds. I was like, I was buzzing. I'm like, that has been like, some hours. Like, I've grafted for that one. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, had that one. And then I think the following weekend was my birthday. And my missus had been on me. She's like, yeah, what do you want to do for your birthday? She tried to get me to go to Ibiza, all these different places in Europe, these different posh restaurants. And I said to her, babe, I just want to go fishing. And that's what we did. So we got here on the Saturday night and we literally did the night right by the lodge. So I had the nice evening with her. I woke up in the morning and I, I'd slept on the floor. So, you know, first light, I'm awake. And as I'm sat there having a tea, looking down the length of the lake, I'm like, bit like a fish. See another one, definitely a fish. So I wound my rod in, checked on her, she's asleep. And I've run down the other end of the lake. And as I've got down there, normally, I mean, you know, all the margins are quite clear on Horton. 
And anyway, down here, it's all quite cloudy, and I'm looking around thinking, what, what is going on? Like, is it an algae bloom? And anyway, I've gone around to the next swim, and that's the same. It's like all coloured up, and I look out at the lake, and you can see like clouds, like proper clouds. Like, that's fish, that is definitely fish. I've run all the way back up to this end, and I'm like, babe, babe, get up, get up, get up. She's like, Ugh. we need to move, we need to move. And she's like, oh, give me a few minutes. I'm like, no, we need to move now. Like, the fish are down there, they're feeding. And I've got all the gear on the barrel, and we've all the way down there, we've got down there. And, um, yeah, got into the bay, and you know, I'm stood there, and one's hit the bottom, and there's just a plume of bubbles. I'm like, that's, that's me, so I've cast out, perfect, donk down, rod on the deck looking around and, and I've got that little voice again, Ollie going, don't cast, don't cast, don't cast. I'm like, oh. I think I gave it probably 20 minutes, had to get another rod out. So I, this one was just a single, cast it out, bang on the money again, put the rod down and they carried on fizzing over the top and I'm like, well, that's a bite, like, I haven't spooked him. Anyway, my missus is like, I've had a tea, she's trying to get back into the sleeping bag and as I'm stood there talking to her, one of the rods has gone, picked it up, <clears throat> playing it and I'm like, looking at the rod tip thinking, that's, that's arched around quite a bit. And I'm trying to get her attention. She thinks I'm telling her off because she's fighting about in the sleeping bag. And I'm like, babe, I've got one. So she jumped up all excited. I said to her, get the net. And last year we went fishing on my birthday and I taught her how to net fish. So I went, right, you're gonna net it. She's like, okay, baby, she's from Leeds. Okay, baby. So she's in there and she's like, not moving, like she's there. Is it a big one? Is it a big one? I'm like, no, nah, it's only small. And she's like, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I brought it around and she scooped it up and she's like, it's massive, baby, it's massive. And anyway, I've looked in the net and I'm thinking, that, that is a chunk. And um, I've done my usual thing, called Ollie. All right, mate, I know it's your Sunday with, with, with the missus, but I've got quite a big fish in the net. Yeah. Luckily, he was about. And I left that one in the net. And um, yeah, right, I left the other rod. I, I, normally, I would have like unhooked it and recast, but I thought, no, you know, I'm just going to fish that one rod, one rod life and all that. And um, yeah, Ollie turned up 20 minutes later, done the pictures, put it back, had a tea. And, um, and he went and I kind of like, I said to him, look, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's your Sunday with your, with your missus, I'll leave you to it. And he's like, if you catch one, ring me. Anyway, yeah, it's gone. I wanted to stay, but she was hangry. Yeah, she, she was hangry. You know, she was hangry. Happy wife, happy life. That's it. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so I reckon Ollie had probably got to the car and it's gone, playing it. Same thing, got the missus up, she's there with the net. And this one didn't fight quite as hard, got it in the net. And I'm looking at it in the net thinking, that is a spit of the last fish, it, it must be the same weight. So got the fish out and it was a few ounces less, 42. So two 42 pounders in an hour, hour and a half, whatever it was. Put the fish back and that was me floating for the rest of the day. I took, took my missus home, came back and... I ended up fishing a swim next door. It got, got late, Ollie turned up, the night owl, and we sat there having a tea, and it must have got to half one, something like that. And we're sitting there. That was a fish, did you hear that? Was that a fish? Definitely a fish. We both run into the swim next door, and we look in. Had another one go, and another one. I'm, like, oh. I'm thinking, I can't believe I've moved out of this swim, gone next door, got two rods out, and they're back again. And it, I think it got to about half one, Ollie went and did his thing, two o'clock, half two, whatever it was, it was late. And I, I brought a rod round, cast it out and just slept on the bed chair. And then in the morning, I moved all the gear around. And I actually recast in the morning, like, shouldn't have done it, but I recast. And again, got the rod out and they carried on fizzing. So I was like, that is a bite. And I was dozing because it was my actual birthday morning. My phone was constant, people texting, people trying to call. I'm half trying to sleep and I'm just, and in the finish I, I went, fell asleep and I woke up to that noise of the, the bobbing cracking into the butt. I sort of look around and look at my tip, my tip's just nodding, sort of stumbled forward, picked up the rod, got it in and another 30 pounder like, happy birthday, you know, I couldn't have written it. I mean, if, you know, a couple of 42 pounders and a 30 is like, yeah, happy birthday Dave. Um, and that brings us up to, to date, so it's well gone midnight. I'm knackered, I'm sure the boys are knackered, they've been chasing me around, well Lou's been chasing me around, Ollie, Ollie knows the score, he stayed away today. So um, until next month, happy fishing. <laughs>